Okay, this is Algebra 1, Lesson 2.5, and this lesson was on literal equations. Now, I've actually already looked at this lesson. I just had a couple of people ask me to go back and review it one more time, so we're going to take a look quickly at the definition of literal equations, and then I'm going to pick a few problems from the lesson and show you how to do them. So if you recall, briefly, what we've done in Chapter 2 so far is we first solved one-step equations with one variable. Next, we looked at two-step equations, still with one variable. And then we added a couple more steps in multi-step equations with one variable. And then we put equations, or we put variables on both sides of the equal sign and called it variables on both sides. Notice all of these lessons only involved one variable. Today, what you're going to look at in Lesson 2.5 are called literal equations. And literal equations, by the definition that we looked at, are equations that involve two or more variables. So previously we've looked at equations like x plus 3 equals 10. That's a one step. If I were to make this 4x plus 3 equals 10, that's a two step equation. If I were to make this 2 times the quantity, 4x plus 3, now I have a multi-step equation. And if I throw another variable in on the other side of the equal sign, that is a variables on both sides equation. But what you recognize about all the equations I showed you is there's only one variable, and that's the letter x. Even when I put one on both sides, it still has only one variable. If I throw in another variable like why? Now it's a literal equation because it has two or more variables. So, here's the problem. And it says 4m minus 2n equals 10. You're asked to solve for n. With a literal equation, the easiest way I know how is to simply find the letter you're solving for and circle the term that contains it. So I'm going to circle the negative 2n or the minus 2n. And I'm going to solve it just like it was written, as if it were written like this. Or even if it were written like this. I'm going to solve it just like I've done all the other equations, just by using the rules that I've learned. So 4m is being added or subtracted with the 2n, so I'm going to get rid of the 4n by subtracting it. What I do on one side of an equation, I do on the other side. 4m minus 4m is 0. It cancels and goes away, and I'm left with negative 2n. On the right-hand side of the equation, 10 minus 4m, well, those are not like terms, so all I can do is rewrite it, 10 minus 4m. Have I solved for n? No, I have negative 2n. So to solve for just n or 1n, I have to divide this side by negative 2. Because negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, or those two cancel, and I'm left with n. I'm almost there. What I do on one side of an equation, I have to do on the other side. So I divide the entire right-hand side by negative 2. And what I'm left with is 10 minus 4m over negative 2. Now, there is a way that you can reduce this equation, but I'm going to let you just stop right there. That's the answer. We also took a look at some formulas. And all the formulas that you see here, if you notice, if you look closely, each of these formulas involves more than one variable, involves two or more. 1, 2, 3 variables here, 1, 2 here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So all of these formulas, because they involve two or more variables, are literal equations. And we'll look at some of these in a minute. So in the lesson on, in chapter 2, lesson 2.5, you had some equations. And some of them, for example, number 22, involved solving for a specific variable. 
Actually, that's a B. So the directions were to solve for x. Probably the most difficult part about this type of problem is that you end up with letters and no numbers, and that freaks people out. But the steps involved in solving them are the same as if all of them were letters. So here we go. If I'm going to solve for x, the first thing I want to do is figure out where it is, and I've highlighted it. So I want to get x all by itself. The problem is this x is involved in a fraction, and it's involved in an expression on the top of a fraction, so I want to get rid of the bottom of the fraction, get rid of the b. So if this top is being divided by b, I undo division by multiplication. So I multiply this side by b so that I can get b to go away. What I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. So the next step in this equation is b times y equals x minus b. I'm still trying to solve for x. And what's happening with the x in this equation is x is being subtracted, or v is being subtracted from x, so it's x minus v. So to get rid of minus v, I have to add v. And what I do to one side, I do the other. Minus v and plus v cancel each other out. I'm left with x. On the left-hand side, I have b times y. Let me back up. On the left-hand side, I have b times y plus v. Looks odd, but that is the correct answer. Let's try another one. Number 27 says x plus 2 x plus 2, not x plus y, over y minus 1 equals 2. And in this problem, again, you're solving for the letter x. Here's the letter x. Unfortunately, like the last problem, x is part of an expression that's part of a fraction. So before I can do anything with the x, I have to get rid of the fraction part. So I have to get rid of the bottom part, which is y minus 1. And because we're dividing by y minus 1, I'm going to multiply both sides by y minus 1. y minus 1 on the left-hand side of the equation cancels with the y minus 1 on the bottom. And what's left is x plus 2. On the right-hand side of the equation, I'm multiplying 2 by y minus 1, so I have to distribute. 2 times y is 2y, 2 times y. And 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. Almost done. I'm still solving for x. And what's left here is x plus 2. To get rid of the plus 2, I subtract 2. And what I do on one side of the equation, I have to do on the other side. And I'm going to line up the minus 2 with the other constant. The 2's cancel on the left-hand side. I'm left with x. 2 minus 2 minus 2. These two negatives 2 make negative 4. And my answer is x equals 2 minus 4. One more. One of the difficult problems from this lesson involved a formula in problem number 39. V equals one third pi r squared and h. And the problem asks you solve for h. There's one, two, three variables. This is a literal equation. And in this equation, I'm solving for h. So I'm just going to circle the letter h. That's what I'm trying to get by itself. What's happening with the one-third 
and the pi and the r squared and the h is that they're all being multiplied together. And we've learned that the opposite of multiplication or the inverse of multiplication is to divide. Unfortunately, when you have a fraction, that's not the neatest way to solve the problem. You don't normally divide a fraction by a fraction because then you get complex fractions. So first step is to get rid of this one third and what we learned was when there's a fraction involved, instead of dividing, you multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one third is three over one. So I'm going to multiply the right hand side by three over one so that this three and this three cancel out to leave me with pi r squared h. And if I multiply the right hand side by three, I also have to multiply the left hand side by three. So what's left is three v. Now I'm still trying to solve for h. And I still have h being multiplied by r squared and by pi. So to undo multiplication, I'm going to divide. I'm going to divide by pi and by r squared. And the reason I multiply, or excuse me, divide by pi is so they cancel. And the reason I divide by r squared is so they cancel. And what I do on the right-hand side, I have to do on the left-hand side. All of the variables that canceled over on the right-hand side leave me with h. And on the left-hand side, I'm left with 3v over pi r squared. And that's my answer. So hopefully, by showing you a few examples, I've cleared up some of the misconceptions with literal equations. If you've watched this video and it's made a difference and it's helped clear some things up, you can give me a thumbs up. And if you've watched it and you still have difficulty, come see me in class and we can do a few more problems.